My name's Ethan and I'm 17. My life's pretty ordinary, or at least it used to be. I live with my mom, Denise, and my stepdad, Rick, in a small, quiet town where everyone knows everyone's business. My dad passed away when I was 10, and for a long time, it was just me and my mom against the world. But a few years ago, she remarried, and suddenly, it wasn't just the two of us anymore. Rick's an alright guy. He's a mechanic with his own shop, and he's always got grease on his hands and a story about fixing something no one else could. At first, I resented him. I mean, he wasn't my dad, and he was taking up space in the house that used to feel like ours. But over time, I warmed up to him. He's laid back, likes to joke around, and he never tries to act like he's replacing my dad. But this story isn't about Rick. It's about something I never saw coming, something that turned my world upside down. It all started on a rainy Wednesday afternoon, the kind where the sky stays gray all day, and you can't tell what time it is without looking at a clock. Mom was out running errands, and Rick was working late at the shop. I was home alone, stretched out on the couch with my headphones on, half watching a rerun of some crime show and scrolling through my phone. I should have been working on my English essay, but procrastination and I are old friends. Instead, I was busy scrolling through memes and random videos, the kind of mindless stuff that makes the hours melt away. The rain tapped against the windows, and the whole house felt still, like the world outside had paused. Then I heard it, a soft creak upstairs. At first I thought I imagined it. This house is old, and old houses make noises. But then it happened again, louder this time. I took out my headphones, my ears straining against the silence. Rick, I called out, even though I knew he wasn't home. No answer. I hesitated, heart thudding in my chest. I grabbed a flashlight from the kitchen drawer. I wasn't about to investigate unarmed and crept upstairs. The hallway was dark except for the faint glow from the nightlight Mom kept plugged in by the bathroom. Everything looked normal, but the air felt different, heavier. When I reached my room, the door was slightly ajar. I always closed it. Always. I stepped inside, my fingers tight around the flashlight. My bed was unmade, clothes scattered on the floor like usual. But something was off. My desk drawer was open, and I knew I hadn't left it that way. I checked the drawer. Everything seemed to be there. My notebooks, my keys, the box of spare batteries. But it still felt wrong, like someone had been in my space. The rest of the evening passed uneventfully, but I couldn't shake the feeling that I wasn't alone. When Mom came home, I told her about the noises in the drawer, but she just waved it off. It's an old house, Ethan. Things settle, doors shift. Don't let your imagination run wild. I nodded, but her words didn't convince me. That night, I locked my bedroom door for the first time in years. The next day, life went back to normal. School, homework, the usual grind. By the weekend, I'd almost forgotten about the incident, but then something strange happened. It was Saturday morning, and Rick had left early to help a friend tow a broken-down truck. Mom was cleaning out the garage, leaving me to handle breakfast. I was frying eggs when I heard footsteps behind me. Morning, I said without turning around assuming it was mom. But when I glanced over my shoulder, it wasn't her. It was Clara. It was... Clara's Rick's younger sister. She's 26, works as a freelance graphic designer, and has this air about her like she's too cool for this town. I didn't even know she was in town. She usually lived three hours away in the city. Clara? What are you doing here? I asked, surprised. Hey, Ethan, she said, her voice casual. But there was something off about her tone. Just stopped by to pick up some stuff from the garage. Oh, cool, I said, flipping the eggs. You want some breakfast? No, I'm good, she replied, but she didn't leave. Instead, she leaned against the counter, watching me. Her gaze felt strange, almost too intense, like she was trying to read my mind. Something wrong? I asked, trying to sound casual. No, she said quickly, a little too quickly. I was just thinking, You've grown up a lot, Ethan. You're not a kid anymore. Uh, thanks, I said, unsure how to respond. The air between us felt awkward, charged with something unspoken. She finally walked away, leaving me alone in the kitchen. But the encounter left me uneasy. Over the next few weeks, Clara started showing up more often. She'd drop by unannounced, always with some vague excuse about needing to grab something from the garage or borrowing tools from Rick. At first I didn't think much of it, 
family visits weren't unusual. But then things got... weird. One evening, I was watching a movie in the living room when Clara sat down next to me closer than necessary. She didn't say much, just stared at the screen, but I could feel her watching me out of the corner of her eye. It was unsettling, like there was something she wanted to say but couldn't. Ethan, she finally said, her voice low. Do you ever feel like, like people don't really see you? Like they only see the version of you they expect? I frowned, caught off guard by the question. I guess. I don't know. Why? She shrugged, her expression unreadable. Just wondering. The conversation ended there, but her words stuck with me. Things escalated a few nights later. I was lying in bed half asleep when I heard the faintest knock at my door. Groggy, I called out. Yeah? The door creaked open and Clara stepped inside. She was wearing a long coat, her hair damp like she'd been out in the rain. Clara, what are you doing? I asked, sitting up. She hesitated, her eyes flickering to the floor before meeting mine. I needed someone to talk to. At midnight? I said, my voice laced with confusion. She didn't answer. Instead, she walked over to the edge of my bed and sat down. Her presence felt overwhelming, the air thick with something I couldn't name. I feel like I don't belong, she said quietly. Like I'm stuck between two worlds and neither of them fits. I didn't know what to say. Part of me wanted to comfort her, but another part of me felt the weight of something unspoken hanging in the air. That night changed everything. Clara started confiding in me more, and I found myself drawn to her in ways that confused me. She wasn't just Rick's sister anymore. She was something else. Something I couldn't quite define. But the more time we spent together, the more I realized we were walking a dangerous line, one that could unravel everything. I tried to keep my distance, but it felt impossible. Every time I saw her, the connection between us grew stronger, pulling me into a web of emotions I didn't understand. And then, one rainy night, everything came to a head. That night, the rain poured relentlessly, drumming against the windows like an insistent warning. The house was quiet, too quiet as if it knew something was about to happen. Rick was out late as usual and Mom had gone to bed early after a long day. I stayed up, mindlessly scrolling through my phone, trying to ignore the thoughts swirling in my head. A sudden knock at the front door broke the stillness. The sound was sharp, unexpected. My heart jolted. It was late. Too late for visitors. I hesitated, debating whether to answer it, but the knocking came again, firmer this time. I grabbed my phone, ready to call someone if this turned out to be trouble, and approached the door cautiously. When I opened it, Clara stood there, drenched from the rain. Her coat clung to her, and her hair was plastered to her face. She looked... desperate. Clara? I said, my voice tinged with confusion and concern. What are you doing here? I couldn't stay home, she said, her voice trembling. I didn't know where else to go. Come inside, I said quickly, stepping aside to let her in. She moved past me, water dripping from her coat onto the wooden floor. I shut the door behind her, the sound of the rain muffled but still present in the background. She stood in the entryway, shivering slightly. I'm sorry to just show up like this. It's okay, I said. You're soaked. Let me grab you a towel. I hurried to the bathroom, grabbing the first towel I could find and handed it to her. She took it with a small, grateful smile and started drying her hair. What happened? I asked watching her closely. Something about her seemed off. Nervous, unsettled. I had a fight with my roommate, she said after a moment. It got bad and I needed to get out of there. You could have called, I said gently. You didn't have to drive all the way here in this weather. I didn't think you'd mind, she said, her eyes locking onto mine. I just, I needed someone I could trust. Her words hit me harder than I expected. I nodded, unsure of what to say. Do you want something warm to drink? Tea? Coffee? Tea sounds nice, she said softly. I made us both mugs of tea and we sat on the couch in the living room. The room was dimly lit, the warm glow of a single lamp casting long shadows on the walls. The rain continued its relentless rhythm outside, a steady backdrop to the silence between us. Clara held the mug between her hands, staring into it as if searching for answers in the steam. I don't know why I always feel so out of place, she said suddenly, like I'm stuck in this life that doesn't belong to me. I wasn't sure how to respond. I think everyone feels that way sometimes, I offered. 
like they don't quite fit, but it's usually temporary. She looked at me, her expression unreadable. Do you feel that way, Ethan? Like you don't belong? I hesitated, caught off guard by the question. Sometimes, I admitted, but I think it's normal, especially at our age. She nodded slowly, her gaze drifting back to the mug in her hands. The silence stretched between us, heavy and charged. You've grown up a lot, she said after a while. You're not the same kid I remember. I wasn't sure how to take that. I guess people change, I said, trying to sound casual. She smiled faintly. Yeah, they do. The conversation shifted after that, becoming lighter, easier. We talked about random things, her work, my school, even old family memories. For a while, it felt normal, like we were just two people enjoying each other's company. But as the night wore on, the atmosphere changed. The pauses between our words grew longer, the silences more loaded. I couldn't ignore the way her eyes lingered on me, the way her body tilted slightly toward mine, and I couldn't deny the way my pulse quickened whenever our gazes met. I should probably get going, she said suddenly, breaking the spell. It's still pouring outside, I said quickly. You can't drive in this. She hesitated, glancing toward the window. The rain showed no signs of letting up. I don't want to impose, she said softly. You're not, I assured her. Stay here tonight. We have the guest room. She nodded slowly. Okay. Thank you, I showed her to the guest room, trying to ignore the strange tension in the air. As she stood in the doorway, she turned to me, her expression softer, more vulnerable than I'd ever seen it. Thanks, Ethan, she said, for everything. Of course, I said, my voice quieter than I intended. Good night, Clara. Good night, she replied, her gaze lingering on me for a moment before she stepped into the room and closed the door. I stood there for a long moment, staring at the closed door, my thoughts a tangled mess. Something was happening between us, something unspoken but undeniable, and I didn't know how to handle it. That night I barely slept. My mind kept replaying the look in her eyes the way her voice had softened when she said my name. I told myself it was nothing, that I was imagining things. But deep down, I knew better. The next morning, the rain had stopped, but the air was still thick with humidity. I found Clara in the kitchen pouring herself a cup of coffee. She was wearing one of Rick's old hoodies, the sleeves too long for her arms, and it made her look younger, almost fragile. Morning, I said, my voice still scratchy from sleep. Morning, she replied, giving me a small smile. We sat at the table eating breakfast in comfortable silence, but as the minutes passed, I couldn't shake the feeling that something had shifted between us. The conversation from the night before hung in the air, unresolved. The weeks that followed that rainy night blurred together. Clara's visits became more frequent, each one pulling me deeper into a confusing mix of emotions. She wasn't just a visitor anymore. She felt like a permanent part of my life, slipping into the cracks of my world in ways I hadn't expected. Rick didn't seem to notice. He was busy with work leaving early and coming home late, trusting that everything at home was fine. Mom was the same, too preoccupied with her own responsibilities to see the unspoken tension building between Clara and me. It felt like our connection was this fragile secret, hovering on the edge of something dangerous. Then came the night when everything finally came to a head. It was a warm Saturday evening, one of those nights where the air feels heavy and the world seems to slow down. Rick and Mom had gone to a late movie, leaving Clara and me alone in the house. I tried to keep myself busy, flipping through channels in the living room, but I couldn't focus. My mind was a storm of questions I didn't know how to answer. Clara found me sitting on the couch, her footsteps soft against the carpet. She wasn't dressed like usual, no casual sweater or jeans. Instead, she wore a flowing summer dress, light and airy, like she'd just come from a garden party. She stood there for a moment, her hands clasped nervously in front of her, before finally sitting down beside me. Can we talk? She asked, her voice softer than usual. I nodded, my heart already racing. Yeah, what's up? She hesitated, her fingers fidgeting with the hem of her dress. I can't keep pretending everything's normal, Ethan, it's not. Her words sent a jolt through me, and I struggled to keep my voice steady. What do you mean? She turned to face me, her eyes filled with something raw something I hadn't seen before. You know what I mean. This thing between us, it's not normal. 
I opened my mouth to speak, but no words came out. She was right, of course. We both knew it. But hearing her say it out loud made it real in a way I wasn't ready for. I don't know what to do, I admitted finally, my voice barely above a whisper. I feel, I don't know, like I can't stop thinking about you. But it's not right. It can't be. Her breath hitched, and for a moment I thought she might cry. But then she reached out, her hand brushing against mine. The touch was electric, sending a shockwave through my body. I feel it too, she whispered. But we can't let this ruin everything. Not for Rick. Not for your mom. Not for us. The words hung in the air, heavy and final. I knew she was right, but it didn't make it any easier. The connection between us was like a current, impossible to ignore but just as impossible to act on without destroying everything in its path. Before I could respond, the sound of the front door opening shattered the moment. Mom and Rick were home. Clara pulled her hand back quickly, her face flushing as she stood up. We can't do this, she said firmly, her voice trembling. We can't let this go any further. I nodded, my throat too tight to speak. She left the room without another word, leaving me alone on the couch, my thoughts a chaotic mess. The next morning, Clara was gone. She left early, leaving a simple note on the kitchen counter. Thank you for everything. I need some space to figure things out. Take care of yourself, Ethan. Clara. I stared at the note for what felt like hours, the words blurring together as the weight of her absence settled over me. She was right to leave. We both knew it. But that didn't make the ache in my chest any less real. The house felt emptier without her, quieter in a way that made it hard to breathe. I threw myself into school, work, anything to keep my mind off her. But no matter how hard I tried, I couldn't forget the way she looked at me, the way her hand had felt against mine. It wasn't something I could just erase. Weeks turned into months, and life went on. Clara stayed away, her visits becoming less frequent until they stopped altogether. Mom and Rick never noticed the change, too wrapped up in their own lives to see the cracks in mine. But I noticed. Every day, I felt the absence of something I couldn't name, something I wasn't sure I'd ever get back. Clara had been a part of my life in a way no one else ever had, and now she was gone, leaving behind only memories and unanswered questions. One evening, months later, I got a text from Clara. It was simple, almost too casual for what it meant. Hope you're doing well. I'm moving to the city full time. Take care. I stared at the screen, my heart sinking. I wanted to reply, to tell her how much I missed her, how much I wished things could be different, but I didn't. Instead, I typed back a single word. You too. And that was it. The last time we ever spoke, sometimes late at night, I think about her, about what might have been if things were different. But life doesn't work like that. We don't always get the answers we want or the endings we hope for. All we can do is move forward, carrying the weight of the past with us, hoping it makes us stronger.